Hi there everyone, welcome to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. If you have never used Delphi before, this is the video for you to watch as I will show you how to get started from scratch. I will be using parts of my books to help you understand how to code in Delphi. The best way is to practice, so go and download the data files for grade 10s from this link here. If you would like to order a hard copy book, you can go to my website here and complete the e-form. But the book is also available as an e-book from the Etsy store. Let's get started by creating our own program. I suggest that you watch this video and press pause between the steps and try it yourself using Delphi on your computer. Of course, step one would be to open the program. I have pinned it down here in my taskbar, so I only have to click once to get Delphi to open, but you might have it as an icon on your, on your desktop, so you have to double click and Delphi will open. Depending on how fast your computer is, your program might take a while to open. Don't worry too much if your program takes long to open. Once it's open, it's all the same on all the computers. To create a program, we are always going to click on File, then on New, and then on VCL. Now what you see in front of you is the form. Here is an example of a form when I want to print in Word. But we are starting off with a blank form and we have to add all of these, what is called objects, onto the form for the user to interact with and to see output. You can resize your form by clicking and dragging on this corner. I don't suggest that you make it too large that it disappears behind of these panels on the left and the right, as it just makes it a little bit difficult to get to everything on your screen. The form is also an object and later we are going to add other objects to this form. But every object in Delphi needs to be renamed. It's a name that the programmers will use to code with. Every object that we are going to add to this form has certain properties and the properties we can see in the object inspector on the left of your screen. Now the first thing we need to do with each object is we need to give it a name that the programmer will use. You will see that the properties here are in alphabetical order and you are looking for the name property. Every object has a prefix with three characters that we are going to use to start the name with and we are always going to type them as lowercase letters. In general, it leaves out the vowels, but not always, so they're not so hard to remember. The form's prefix is going to be lowercase letters FRM, and then we are going to give the object a descriptive name, fairly short, but descriptive, starting with a capital letter. And this one we are going to call FRM Contact. When you are done renaming an object, hit Enter. And in this case, renaming the form, you are also going to see it changing up there. But as you can imagine, our users don't want to see the name we're coding with. We want to make our form look nice for the user that uses this form. To change what the user sees here at the top, we have to scroll up to the caption property. And the caption is what the user will see. And in this case, we're going to delete that FRM so they can't see that. And now we can say contact details. And now you can see it has changed there at the top of my form. Before we continue, what we want to do is save this program in case we get load shedded and we lose everything we have done. It's a good idea to save your program often. The first time we are going to save this program, we have to give it a name and a folder. So you are always going to click on File, Save All. Every time that you want to save, you have to use File, Save All and none of the other options in this menu. A little box will pop up and it will take you to where you want to save. The default might not be where you want to save, so you are going to have to browse to where you have downloaded the Delphi files. Here I have the data files downloaded and I'm going to go inside there. 
These other folders that are in here are programs that we are going to use later. Every program needs to be saved in a folder because there are multiple files to be stored when I save a program. So I'm going to click on new folder there and I want you to call this folder example program. You can hit enter once and then double click on that folder and now we're going to save our program. You will see that the first that is opened here says save as type Delphi unit and you might see the dot pass. You might not, but don't worry about that. We will fix it later. We are going to name the unit also FRM lowercase, then a capital letter. We're going to call this example and then underscore U. Here we are saving the file that contains the code. This is the unit. And if ever you need to print this, you will go to this file to open and print it. Once you click save, another box should pop up. If it doesn't, you didn't click on file save all, so I suggest that you quickly go and do that. Now you will see the type here says projects. And here we're going to give this project the same name, also starting with FRN example, but now underscore P for project. And you click save. You will only need to give this program a name once. So this whole process we only do once. From now on, when we click File Save All, we will just be saving the changes. We won't have to give it a name again. Our next step would be to add other objects to our form. And here on the right bottom, you're going to see the tool palette. And we need to search for the objects in this tool palette to add them to our form. Now, some of the objects we use just to display information to the user, and we don't really need to rename them. This would be like, for example, a label. So I type in there just part of the name, and you can see that label has now been highlighted. If I now click on the form, it has been added. I have the CN Wizard installed on my computer, and that is why this box opens. But let's take an example of when you don't have the CN Wizard installed. So I'm just going to click OK. Yours would probably now say Label 1. Now we need to go and change what the user sees. And a label also has a caption property that we can change. We're going to change this label here to say Name. In general, if you have an object on your form, that you are not going to use in your code to code with, you don't really need to rename it. But it won't be wrong to rename it. What I want you to do now is to add two more labels to your form and change the caption. So the second one will say surname and then the, the, the third one will say cell. Press pause and add your extra two labels here so that you can see the three labels there with the captions changed as on the screen. Labels are often used just to explain to the user what to do next, but we can also use labels to produce output to the user to give them some information of what we have processed. However, we need the user to enter something in our form to process. And for input, we often use the edit box. So if you type in ed, you'll see edit there. And I'm going to click on the form there. And this we will definitely code with because we need input from the user. Therefore, we need to change the name of the object. And we are going to use the prefix edt. And this one we will use for the user to enter their name. So I'm going to call it EDT name and remember to start the name then with a capital letter. We are not allowed to use spaces in the names of objects. When I hit enter, you will see that it changes here on my form as well. Now our edit boxes don't have a caption property. They have a text property and this is what the user will see. So what we want to do is we want to start off with a blank edit box so the user don't see the name of this object. So scroll to the edit or the text property at the bottom, click on the right and just delete that in there. 
we still have the name of the object edt name but the text property has been cleared so it's empty when the program starts you now need to add two more edit boxes and here's a little trick should you want to add more than one edit box to your form you can search for the edit and then hold the shift key in and then add click on the edit box there and then add it to your form and every time i click it will create a new edit box once i'm done adding multiple edit boxes you need to make sure next to the name where you searched that you just close it else it will continue to add edit boxes to your form but let's say you forgot to do that and you added another edit box by mistake which you don't need you can see that the active object on my form is highlighted with these blue dots so if i click on that one I'm on EDT2. If I click on this one, I'm on EDT3. So if I want to get rid of an object, I will single click on the object and then I will push the delete button on my keyboard. I know that sometimes you guys initially double click on something and you see something that looks like this. We'll get to this later. This is where we will add our code. But to get out of this, you press the F12 key at the top of your keyboard and it will take you back to your form. Maybe you just want to try the F12 key now to see how we flip from the form to the code. It is important to note that the object inspector contains the property of only one object at, the t at a time. You can see which one is highlighted. First of all, at the moment, the form is highlighted. I can see those little dots on the outside of the form. In the structure at the top, I can also see that it's highlighted there. But in the object inspector here at the top, you can also see which object you are on because it will have that name listed there. So if I want to go and change the name of the second edit, I single click on it. I can see the blue dots. I can see it's highlighted there. And I can see at the top of my edit box, it currently says EDT1. We're going to name this because we're going to use this in our code. We're going to call this EDT surname. Then again, you want to delete the text from this edit box so it is cleared. I then do the same for the third one and I'm going to name it EDT cell and I want to clear the text property. Press pause and do it yourself. If you haven't placed them in the positions that you want these objects, you can single click and click and drag them around. You also can highlight a whole bunch of them and move them all at once. And there are other options when you right click and you go to position and align that you can play around with. What happens sometimes is you have clicked on a label and you cleared that label and if I unclick it you can't see it anymore and then it's difficult to get hold of that label again to make the changes you need to. You can use your structure here to select an object and then just put that back. Our aim is to have a form that looks like this. We have added the three labels and we have added the three edit boxes. The next step is going to be adding these buttons here. I want you to try this yourself. Go to your tool palette, look for button. Then change the name of the button to btn click. Change the caption of the button to click in the object inspector. And your button should look like this. Then search for two bit buttons and make these changes. These are the properties in the object inspector and these are on the right, the values that you have to assign to those properties. This is for the reset button and this here is for the close button. Press pause and try it yourself. Your form should look like this now and I hope you saw that under the kind property we actually have some options here to select from which determines the picture that we see and sometimes even code that is written for it already. The next object we are going to add would be the rich edit and this is this white block here 
and we use the rich edit for output to display information to the user. Go to your tool palette and look for the rich edit and just click on it anywhere in your form. You want to rename it here. The name, the general name we use is going to be red for rich edit. That's the prefix. And I'm just going to call mine out. Usually we call it output, but I know that initially you guys type a little bit slow. So it helps to just call it out instead of output speeds up our coding. Again, we don't want to let the user see the name of our object. That won't look nice. But this time we are going to go to the lines property to get rid of it. So in your object inspector on the right, click there to the right of lines. You will see that there are three dots available there that I can click on. And once I click on that, I will have this open up. And this is where we can remove by using your backspace button any lines that are in there. Then click OK and it will be empty. You can also resize it to make it a little bit larger. Another property that we often need on a rich edit is scroll bars. As you would have the scroll bar that I'm scrolling with now, this is the vertical scroll bar. I can also add horizontal scroll bars. And the property there is very easy. It's scroll bars and it's again something that I can select. And for this program, we will use the vertical scroll bars. You won't see them appearing now, but once there's enough output, you will be able to scroll to see all the output in your rich edit. You must excuse the hot it does. I have some breeding here next to me. Nothing I can do about that. It is a good time to now save your program. So remember, we are always going to click on file and then save all. If you go back to file now, you'll see that it is disabled, so you can't click on it. The only reason is because there have been no changes since the last time I saved. Should I just move something on my form to a different spot and I click File, Save All, it will be available again. If you are using my printed book, I suggest that you label on in your textbook what each object here was called that we added to the form. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to start coding your program. If you are going to take a break and only going to use this program again later and not watch the next video right now, the correct way of closing a program in Delphi is by clicking on File and again Close All. We are never going to use close, we're only going to use close all. In the next video, I'll show you how to open it again. Thank you guys for watching Dandelion Delphi tutorials. You are welcome to leave some comments if there's anything that is unclear or you would like more explanation on. Currently, your program is not doing anything, so watch the next lesson on how do we add code to make our programs perform a task. Hope to see you soon!